Right, I'm Martin Slater, I'm a retired fellow, and the advantage of being retired is you have time to, to read about things you never have time to do when you've got to do a lot of teaching. And when I retired, also, uh, the world began to go through some rather economic turbulent times. You know, I like to think they weren't too causally affected, but uh, uh, in particular, people got very worried about debts, national debts, and so this is a talk about uh, the UK's national debt. Now, let me start with this. This used to be a joke, a good joke in public finance. Alas, it's no longer a joke because we don't really worry terribly much about billions anymore. We're into trillions. 1.6 trillion. That is the net national debt of the UK government in August 2016. If you like billions, that's 1,622 billion. It's the highest it has ever been. It has tripled since 2007. Last year's increase alone was 57.2 billion. That is 1,800 pounds per second. And actually, if you go on the internet, and I believe in Times Square, there is a national debt clock where you can see this sort of thing ticking up as we go along. Now, what does 1.6 trillion actually look like? <laughs> if we piled one pound coins in a single pile, they would, the, that pile would be five million kilometers high. It would get you to the moon and back six and a half times. If, on the other hand, we spread them all out in a carpet, how many times do you think that would cover the surface of the Earth? Well, I'm not going to tell you. You can work that out for yourself. I think you'll find the answer rather surprising. But really, that doesn't really tell you very much about how serious this problem is. Let's think about per person. The UK population is about 65 million. Therefore, that 1.6 trillion works out at about... 25,000 pounds per person, per man, woman, and child. And that last annual increase was 880 pounds in a single year per person. Another way we will obviously look at it might be relative to our income. Well, if we take gross domestic product, GDP, that's the usual measure of a, a national income, the UK's GDP in 2015 was about 1,800 odd billion. Therefore, that national debt is about 86.7% of the UK's national income, nearly 90%. Now, is that a big number or is it a little number? That's the problem. It's actually a lot bigger than many other countries at the moment. Uh, and that, why is this important? Well, it's important because of this word. Austerity. Post-2008, the big economic policy dilemma is, are we going to go for retrenchment? If you're on one side of the political divide, you say, it's fairly obvious we should, you know, we're terribly in debt, we're getting more into debt, we must retrench, and the other side is just profligacy. If you're on the other side of the political divide, well, this is, looks rather different. On the one hand, you'll say, well, this, this is, austerity is just panicking. You know, we really need to hold our nerve and push through this thing until the end. So, I was interested in looking at how has this panned out in the past. Now here, I'm going right the way back to about 1690 in the UK. And this is a graph of the UK national debt. And you see, the first graph I've got here, hmm, this looks rather like the panic scenario, <laughs> okay? Practically nothing all the way, and suddenly as we get to the present day, massive shoot, shoot up. Well, that's rather misleading, actually, and the reason it's misleading is that practically any variable in economics, if you graph it over this kind of time period, looks like that. It's because... There's practically nothing happens during 
the pre-industrial revolution and then everything splurges after the industrial revolution. So don't worry terribly much about that, but look instead at this one. This is a graph of the national debt to GDP ratio. And this is really quite remarkable. This is where we are at the moment, 2012. You remember my last slide said we we're up about 80 to 90% of GDP. That's where we are. This is 80 to 90% in 2012 odd. And you can see it has actually risen quite sharply in the few years after 2008. That's this tripling that I mentioned. But the obvious thing about this graph is that it looks, compared to past history, chicken feed. <laughs> okay? Up here, well, this was 90%. Up here, that's 250%. This is 240%. In, past, in the past history, these ratios have been much, much higher. So what on earth is going on in this? Well, the answer, actually, is really quite simple. This is a story of war and peace. Okay? First of all, we have this continuing rise from about 1690 up to this one here, 1815. This peak is the Battle of Waterloo. Okay. Now, so far as the UK is concerned, the, almost the entire 18th century is a period of continual warfare against the French. Between 1690 and 1815, that's about 125 years, more than half of those years the country was at war. There are periods of peace going on there. Mostly, as I say, against the French. Uh, that one, that was the Americans. <laughs> and there are periods of peace, but it really goes up. And 1815, life is, is terrible. The 19th century, by comparison, is totally different. From 1815, and you can guess where that is, that's 1914, almost unbroken peace, so far as the UK is concerned. And this just goes right down from 250% down to about 25-30% at that point. Then, unfortunately, more <coughs> wars. First World War, a bit of a messy period between the wars, Second World War. And then exactly the same story after 1945, even faster than before. Goes down. In the 1970s and 80s, we're back down to 30, 40%. Bobbles around a bit here, and now clearly we are into a bit of an upturn after that. But let's keep a bit of perspective. So that's the sort of first very important thing. Debt increases because of wars. It falls in peacetime. The second most important thing about this one is that debt ratio decreases not because we actually pay off any of the debt. Debt is very rarely repaid. The real drivers are economic growth and inflation. Go back to this. In 1815, the national debt was about £800 million in their money. In 1914, it was about £650 million. Price level was, if anything, lower, so that was probably in real terms about the same. So what happened here? Well, what happened was simply economic growth. At about steady, not very fast by our, our modern standards, but about 2% a year. What happened here was economic growth and inflation. So it actually goes down about, about twice as fast. So, uh, so there, those are the real drivers, you know, th that in fact we have got out of worse national debt problems in the past, not actually by repaying the debt, but by growing over the long term. And our current debt ratio is only about a third of the past peaks. Why do we go back to about 1690? Well, 1690, well, the real date is 1688, which politically is the so-called glorious revolution. That's when Parliament threw out the last of the Stuart kings and brought in King William and Mary, the beginnings of constitutional monarchy, 
And the final resolution of the struggle, who, who actually controls the money? And it is, is Parliament controls the money, controls the finance, controls taxes, and the debt at that point becomes guaranteed by Parliament, not by the King. And uh, so this debt is intended to be permanent. And indeed it is. Well, let me just skip because I've got some very... 18th century cartoons. Here is John Bull. This is about 1800. And he's groaning under the weight of the national debt. Here's the Chancellor of Exchequer shoveling out gold sovereigns to all and, and sundry. Here's the same Chancellor of the Exchequer. And in this cartoon, he's, the national debt is belching out of his mouth in the great fountain. Here are these predatory seabirds, and these are politicians and financiers and government contractors. Here is poor John Bull again in his rowing boat, completely overwhelmed by this flood. But, let's say, so let's end up, is there really no cause for alarm? Well, not necessarily, no. Certainly it is true the current levels are not historically high, but they are moving in the wrong direction, and they are moving at a time when they should not be. The, at, in peacetime, we should be going down, and we're going up. And of course, Okay, it's okay looking back at history, but history has perhaps been kind to the UK, giving it that long, peaceful 19th century and the, uh, the post-1945 period. That might not be the case in the future. Furthermore, there are others, other things that the government owes other than its nominal national debt. And perhaps most importantly, well, we're looking just at the debt of the government and politically, that's what gets most of the headlines. But actually, it's much more the problem of private sector in debt. It's just, OK, we have debts through the government, but we also have our own debts, mortgages, consumer credit, corporate debt. That is much bigger than the national debt, and that's really what one has to worry about in the future. OK, thanks.